Hello, good evening. My name is Raiko Borzic. I'm coming from Share Foundation, and I'm here to moderate discussion with these wonderful people about the important question on investigative importing and its technological legal frames in 21st century. Uh, we're supposed to have here with us Pedro Noel from Global Leaks. Uh, we'll, I apologize, we lost him somewhere. Uh, but well, it's a Daco Fest, it's a beautiful festival. And we are happy for him having a great time somewhere in prison uh, at the moment. We, uh, here with me are Yeta Jara, journalist, activist, and author of Yeta Nekosova, probably uh, uh, known to all of you, and uh, above all, uh, a brave woman. And uh, even uh, Angelovsky from the most important investigative reporting show in Serbia, Insider. And uh, I prepare a, like a pile of questions for you guys, but... Uh, just waiting for you last 10 minutes, it, it come to my mind that actually it would be fair to, to start with, with giving you opportunity to say what are, at the moment, what are the, the biggest challenges and the, most, and the biggest difficulties uh, in your work you, you're facing now. Can you, uh, you start first, you start first okay. please. That's the deal the, we made. The biggest challenges. Yeah, and the difficulties you have working as investigative reporter now. Uh, I didn't prepare for that question. Uh, that seems it's easy. Yeah. Uh, there are always difficulties. I mean, uh, you face with, uh, you know, people from government who, does, who do not want to speak with you. You face with uh, uh, um, secrecy, with... Uh, um, you know, some kind of uh, wall. Uh, when you try to when you try to uh, investigate something, you always face some wall. Uh, but again, you s just, just more interruption. Our, our impression, my impression as a viewer, is that that you guys managed to to have literally everyone you wanted to speak for the show. Probably no, not. Not all no, the things. No, 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 want, no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 constant battle. Uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, you know, mind battle between us and them constantly. Uh, so we, you know, we, we don't, uh, uh, we don't have any excuse not to, uh, not to deliver answers that people in Serbia want to hear. So but who are the, you don't need to say by the name, but like which are the levels of the government you, you didn't manage to reach? to talk to in order to, to, to feel your story? Uh, well, uh, everyone who's, who is responsible uh, in any way, uh, you know, doesn't want to, 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 to say anything uh, about the things we ask. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we, had a, we had a big story about uh, Russian uh, business in, in Serbia. And the main guy who is uh, behind this South Stream project and, and, and buying a petroleum factory in Serbia, uh, he, he, is, he is still a uh, director of a main gas company in Serbia, public company, uh, despite the fact that we had uh, strong evidence that uh, he misbehaved, misbehaved uh, in the way he treated uh, money of uh, Serbian taxpayers. Uh, he has, as someone said uh, in Serbia, he, ha he has uh, some strong force behind him uh, who um, they, are, are covering, uh, his, they, they are covering him and we suspect that that forces, you know, Russian side. So, uh, if someone has in, in, uh, if someone has back strong enough, uh, you, you can't touch him. So did you manage to ask him any questions? Uh, <laughs> we uh, no. I mean, you or your colleagues? Well, uh, well, yeah. Uh, uh, okay, uh, we tried so many times to to schedule an interview to. Uh, sent him questions by mail, and he refused to answer everything. So one morning I went up in 6 a.m. 
and uh, went straight to his house with uh, with my TV crew and uh, waited for him to wake up and to uh, get ready for his work. And he uh, went out of his house. He tried to uh, get into his car, but I didn't let him uh, because I, I, I just wanted to uh, answer on one question. <laughs> Why don't you answer anything? And, you know, uh, he, he didn't care. Did he offer you any money? No, no. no. <laughs> so the no we, we did have something like that in recent past. That's, that's always the case. So, so extracting questions from governmental officials is still the hardest part of your work. As, as from what I've heard, governmental officials here are, are scared of you, so I suppose it's not, it's not the biggest obstacle in your work today. Yeah, but I suppose what we should know that it's not always so clear cut that the people we are fighting are so far away. Um, and these things very often interlink. And maybe I could just start with the battle that my colleagues are fighting right now in Serbia, actually. My colleagues in Serbia have, and just to see how common our problems are, I think in the Balkans now, it's a lot about following the money, and it's all about following the money and how these politicians want to clean their money. They've become sophisticated that I don't think so much they physically attack journalists, but they want, they're fight, we're fighting a reputation war. Um, my colleagues in Serbia have just published an investigation which reveals that um, Vucic, Serbia's prime minister, how he was, uh, how he sold the yacht company um, and the shares much cheaply than the Arabs that bought it. And um, my colleagues published that. He, as a reaction to that investigation, he organized a press conference where he said that uh, journalists of Bern and Sins, another organization we work with, are, um, are ruining his holiday because he was going to be bu booking himself in some hotel and supposedly uh, my colleagues were also going to stay in the same hotel. And he said, these spies of Bern are staying um, next to me, wanting to spy on me. Um, anyway, so this was public. And now, when you ask the questions, what are the tools of investigative journalists? I mean, we don't always think that we are going to be facing a public um, attack from someone as powerful as the prime minister of the country to hold a press conference. It must be intimidating for them to be there. Unless my colleagues had a strong back in a sense of let's, uh, a co coalition of not only regional journalists that will work to defend them, but international organizations that are going to back them up. Um, other colleagues abroad, NGOs, think tanks, we need, and I'm increasingly finding out that we cannot be alone in this fight, or it is not enough to just write and report, as I talked about it three days ago, but um, we need to form coalitions, and we do that. In Bern, we actually do the civil society type of investigative journalism in, in that after such a publication, the story doesn't end. We need to unite to defend these colleagues, one. We need to push... What happens usually in our case in Kosovo, for example, when we did something similar, when I say something similar, I tell you something similar to that investigation that has been done in Serbia is investigating how our government sold the distribution of electricity very cheaply to the Turks. To the, uh, they sold it for 26 million, while uh, energy minister Hid said that that uh, sale was worth 90 million. So their energy minister, the, the government energy minister, said this could be sold for 90 million. Instead, they sold it to Turk for 26 million and fired her and um, closed Ministry of Energy in general. We don't have Ministry of Energy because the Ministry of Energy didn't agree on the policy. And although we are the third largest lignite um, resource in Europe, but we don't have the Ministry of Energy, but we have 14 other ministries. Anyway, so if the conspiracy goes so far as um, they ignore their own minister, you can imagine uh, how far this would go. So I want to tell you what we did in that case. Apart from putting up requests to see 
uh, the list of assets that um, that was sold to the Turks, and we never got uh, an answer. Was second was that we, um, while the investigative journalists published the story, asked for information. Um, the think tank organizations that I work with, uh, they actually compiled a legal lawsuit for the minister. They fired a lawsuit. Grassroots organizations in in Obilis and Ferizai, they write up and, and uh, protest about how the Turkish um, company right now is, for example, not investing. Because the, the answer we got from the government why it sold the electricity grid so so cheaply was that Turks are going to make 100 million investments a year. Don't you see? They're going to come with big money. So it's been a year. We're waiting to see. And guess what's happening? Entire villages are being let out without electricity because some, some electricity a uh, thing has broken down and Turks say, we don't come and fix it. We're just too busy uh, fixing things for, 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 for people who have more money to pay for electricity, not poor villagers. So, um, the conclusion is you have to build entire, I think we just cannot, uh, cannot rely on our classic role as, as reporters and hope that other things will move on. Institutions are definitely not going to uh, immediately react, in, con in countries like mine at least. They don't react. So we need to rely on other, other sectors of civil society, think tank groups, grassroots groups, and support them, hoping that when you're, um, when you're in trouble, they support you. And I can tell you how this worked. This year I spoke about DocuFest having to fight a cinema that the city wants to... Um, wants to um, destroy to build a shopping mall. So <clears throat> we have to help the DocuFest keep the cinema. And I can tell you when, when I was attacked, DocuFest was one of the organizations that supported me. So I think this is how long term a coalition of organized civil society people rather than organized criminals should work. This is my theory. Thank you. You partially answered the, the, the question I wanted to ask next, next, but I'll still ask it because I think you guys uh, uh, still have some something to add on it. And this is uh, what seems to me central question of investigative reporting today. And and this is how to find a sustainable financial model for the media supporting investigative reporting. Since the beginning of the internet, there were a lot of talks and theories that would, would serious journalism die with the atomization and, and the commercialization of media. And uh, there are many people were saying that, many even serious people, that you know, the, 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 the media as we know it would be dead. Like uh, six years ago, the, the reality today is not as gloomy as they were professing. But investigative reporting is increasingly, it's simply a very expensive thing. And like less and less media can afford it. In Serbia, basically, I think, uh, besides Insider and and uh, and uh, Burn Network that 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 works on, on, per, per on, project on mainstream media there, yeah, are, yeah. there aren't any. Uh, uh, that's not possible. And now even with with the with the with the case you yet to just mentioned the 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 project funding was used in that press conference in the media to say like yeah you are paid by these foreigner foreign foundations and who know who is behind them. So it's like what would be what's like you you said. On your on, on the presentation you had two days ago, like that you, you, before you started to work, you dedicated one year to fundraising. So, like, is that c can you now like advocate it as a model, or there was just like a special case, and you were in a way there was a, there was a good moment, or like what would be what what would be the 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 I don't know how does it look. Any and you can be first to like for, I don't know how did, does it look to you, but to us as viewers of B ninety two, I don't want you to gossip on your own. Uh, on your own house, but like you know, uh, we see investigative reporting, you know, on a, on Insider, but we see it completely disappeared from news. News are just like announcements. Uh, yeah, uh, you cannot rely. And on it's it's not you know it's it's not easy for me to judge because I know how expensive it is, and it's yeah. Uh, you cannot rely on traditional media to solve the problem. Uh, traditional media are part of the system. And there are the part of the problem. So you have to invent new ways to reach the audience. 
okay, uh, Insider is broadcasted on national television station. It's an incident. It's not a rule. Okay, that's uh, uh, Insider is a result of strong fights uh, with the management, with uh, uh, you know people. You know, like they put, they don't invest money in commercials on B92 because of Insider, and you have to fight that because. Uh, Insider made such a difference that, that my TV station, B92, cannot afford to lose it. It would be much more expensive to lose it than to finance it. So that's why they have to, uh, you know, they have to... They need to bear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, 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 they need to, no, 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 they... They can't get rid of them. They need, yeah. to, they need to live with us. Yeah. They don't have a choice, and we made that. And that's not something that, uh, that... That's something that every journalist and every editor can do. You know, uh, media is one thing, journalism is other thing. Media is, uh, you know, journalism, and spe especially investigative journalism, is just one media product. But but can't you say that you know B92s with you know with with its national frequency, so it's, there's certain advertising power. But also with this long tradition of working with the different kind of donors and like good fundraising strategy, could afford uh, such an experiment. They all b backed up. I mean, uh, B92 is now completely financed by its owner, uh, uh, Insider. Is uh, uh, we are in constant fight with our people who owns uh, who own B ninety two. Financial fight. Fina every kind of fight, Ed editorial fight. Uh, fina that's everything had uh, to do with uh, our editorial independence and our right to choose our own things and to pursue our own goals. But, but uh, that's not, I mean, um, BIRN, or uh, Center for Investigative uh, Journalism in Serbia, uh, they have to invent some other ways to finance those investigations. And that's where, you know, you have to rely on you know, foundations that want, that, that share that, uh, that share the same goal. Can't we say then that your case basically is proving that uh, uh, that investigative reporting is financially feasible, but you know the other interests are, are, are stopping are the, the mainstream media and from pursuing it. And are much stronger. It, yeah. the, the mainstream media, as I said, they are part of the system, and that that means that they're the part of the problem. The problem is uh, the system wants to you know to get the, uh, its own message to the public. And investigative journalists, you know, are there to, uh, you know, to dig deeper. Yeah, but this is what I'm trying to say. Like, so, so, so we might then say that if there is a media that it's somehow out of this spider web of, of a power, like they can, they can sell well on the basis of uh, that they are producing investigative journalism. There are no independent, independent media, mainstream media. Are, are not independent. I mean, you cannot. Yeah, but like, if there are independent media, they could live. Your, your theory would say they could live on selling the content at, uh, as such as investigative reporting. That's a sellable content. Yeah. This is what I'm asking. That, is that your opinion? People. Because want if you say that you know that you know that the, the, the B92 is keeping you because they would lose viewership. If they lose insiders, yeah, so it may mean that lose, people, they, you know, like uh, okay. that, that's I mean, certain advertising insider, power, isn't it? In insider is the most uh, important show on B92, and it's the, uh, the show with most viewers. Okay, but that's that's second important thing. The most important thing is what does the government think of B92? Yeah, yeah, but in terms of like in terms of financing your work, it is it is probably the most important thing, isn't it? 
potential. Yeah, not at the moment. Yeah. Uh, I think that. So look, they are they are not keeping you because because you are bringing money through viewership. They are keeping you because you are like reputation. because you are sticking the battle with government. Something like this. Is that what you're trying to say? We, uh, we you know, B92 has this big and important reputation from the 90s as a radio and everything. And we are probably the only ones who keep that fire, you know, yeah. still. But uh, investigative journalism, uh, I believe that has to, you know, um, find its way through new media, through internet. There are a lot of tools to get the message you want to the audience. I'll come to dangers of that, but just uh, uh, would like us yeah, to, to to say on possibility of of, of yeah, the in, investigate I reporting to financing. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's, it's a fight. It's a fight, but it's difficult to ignore a very strong story. It's difficult to ignore a strong voice, and in that sense, you gotta keep fighting, as uh, Igor just said. And you know, one thing I guess you have to find in you find what you have in common with even those that are very fine investigative uh, journalism risky, which is mainstream media. I work with public TV, so it's not a commercial TV, but still it's public TV. It's even worse in that case. And I think the key thing is the basic instinct of majority of mainstream, even public media, is they don't want to become irrelevant. And if your story is relevant, is strong, is argumented, and um, it's viewed like Insider was, for example, that story that was done in Mitrovica, uh, it was viewed here and there. I think they might have found it embarrassed, it might have embarrassed B92 to close down this project. Too much of, so I would say same with us. We, uh, what we did is actually, yes, that's the thing. I knew that from the beginning, I have to have my own money, so I fundraised for a year. Um, and uh, I was put on, on uh, late night programming until uh, the ratings were measured. And, um, you know, I was, for three months first, for three months, what I didn't say in that film I showed here is for three months, I stood in the director's office and I said, I'm not going away until you find me a schedule. So. He only found me a schedule at 23.15 at night to get rid of me. Um, so first was just just the determination and not being, just being at 26, I had nothing to lose in terms of being embarrassed to beg for a schedule. Then when I was given a schedule, I said, all you have to do is give me a time when to show the program, you don't have to pay for the program. And then he said, okay, just give her something after the late night news. Let's bury this program somewhere. And two, two shows after says, let's let her just get, get this out of her system because nobody will come to her show because she's so horrible, nobody will come. So again, because I survived for a year, I had the funding <laughs> that I had worked for a year to to have the funding for entire year, not to start without having the funding for entire year. So always when I think of money, I never have money beyond a year. Even today, when our show is so famous and high ratings, we're never secured more than a year. So almost to just like, for everybody that starts working on this, never to count on long-term contracts. This is not a place to make money, one, lots of money. This is not a place to count for um, a stability in financing. But I think what you have to know is we're people, we would do this without money, actually. So getting paid, wow, great. If we don't get paid, what do you do in the morning? Um, you still would dig. I mean, yes, you have to earn. Uh, in, so now I would like to, I would just say, if I had more funding, I wouldn't spend 50% of my time fundraising. But I spend 50% 50 50 of my time fundraising. I do 50% less investigations, but that's the name of the game. It, that is easier than actually having to rely on, on, um, um, rely on, 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 on an editorial, uh, on editorial, um, 
editorial censorship, but on the other hand, we're, it's a constant struggle. I mean, we broadcast on public TV for 10 years, and in the last year and a half, because um, we've had, I think, a, a system of, of, of more and more uh, pressure on media, we haven't been paid by the public TV. We are trying to, so what we do is we end up with doing lots of other NGO activities in order to do our investigative job because not many donors want to pay just for media and, and investigations. So we end up um, doing all, all sorts of little services like co court monitoring in order to pay for our, for our passion. And this is the name of the game. It's never going to be easy, even no matter how clicked the program is, how great the story is. But if it's not relevant, you, know, you will not even get that donor funding. The donor funding in the Balkans is becoming uh, less and less, and, and it's, uh, the, the good will survive for as long as we survive. It, and I can see it might get less and less in the future, so we might produce less, but we'll still keep some base coming. So this is kind of a, a really um, uncertainty and pessimism we have to live with, get ready for, and just fight it mon month by month. You plan for the future of, new me of, 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 of reporting in new media, and in a way, aren't we in Serbia at least flooded with new media? Like we have, you know, if you look at your Facebook feed, you have all these small websites, like kind of, sometimes it's citizen journalism, sometimes it's quite dilettant, but sometimes it's, up, you know, like, and the people are sharing it, a lot of it is particularly in, uh, in this situation where now we have quite sophisticated, I won't say heavily censored, but like sophisticatedly controlled media space, and like anything that is, that is offering different picture, people widely share. But like with the closer look, as you're probably aware, some of, the, some of those media are obviously financed by certain power centers, by the government, by the police, and sometimes offering uh, 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 facts, but sometimes obviously offering a least to say uh, uh, misguided views on what was going around us, ain't that you know, like, uh, dangerous? Quality always comes up. No. You know? Uh, it crystallizes, you know, in time. Uh, okay, in it Serbia... Sounds nice, but not exactly as an argument. <laughs> not exactly as a... Not, I mean, it's not as a fact. To me, at least. Uh, More like okay, a proverb. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, you have, in Serbia, you have, well, actually three. I mean, you have, the, you, sorry, you had these, uh, so for example, you, had, you have this teleprompter. Do you know this? this, this, this well, yeah, so they, they were leading. It's horrible. No, no, yeah, no, no, they were leading no. this chauvinistic okay, campaign. Okay. Again, and they are, uh, still, they are still influenced, and the people are, people are sharing. They never published Impressum. Nobody knows who the hell are those people. I mean, like, there are. There's one person sometimes signs something, yeah. but like, in and they are still influential in a in the public space in Serbia. Uh, informer they hardly is uh, informer are the newspapers in Serbia that are running the campaign against uh, burn and since about this uh, selling of uh, national airliner, uh, and they are the most read newspapers. How can they live on 350 euros? That's the <laughs> last one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, it, it it was really horrible. We we had that uh, we had that kind of you know uh, attacks all the time. Uh, in uh, who, in Insider, for those of you who don't know, is a documentary series program. We don't uh, publish regularly. When we finish our investigation, when we finish with our with our filming uh, and everything, when we uh, pack up everything, we broadcast it. And uh, during uh, the broadcast of our documentary series, there are a number of attacks on all levels. Uh, they are calling, you know, our editors. Uh, they cut off our funding. Uh, they are making strategies uh, against us on, you know, Twitter or Facebook, on all of those um, websites. And, you know, that's okay. But we, we, we are used to it. And uh, most of those attacks 
come from, you know, sites, web websites like the one you mentioned. Uh, it's very easy and very cheap to open a website and to publish, you know, whatever comes to your mind. Uh, the difference between investigative, investigative journalism and those things are uh, facts. You know, we base our uh, published material on facts we gather. And uh, that's something that stays, okay? Uh, that site, that website is going to last for a year um, until the webmaster gets a better job. You know, we are going to last for, we are now lasting for pretty long time. Just to add to that, we, it's not going to last for a year because they're going to be paid more and more to do exactly that job. Uh, clearly, our enemies are using our colleagues, buying them off, to attack us with our own means, meaning with our own, let's say, with, with the words, with the writing. So lynching campaigns are becoming, look, it's not the government doing it, it's the colleagues, informer doing it. And we've got to be braver than that. It's not just the the awful, let's say, um, kind of um, low-class journalist against sophisticated journalists. We find it's more, we've got to be brave and say it, or um, especially uh, my colleagues in Serbia, they were attacked by liberal news, uh, re liberal online. Informer is the second attacker of, of, our, of our colleagues. E Novine was the first. Liberal guys, friends of DocuFest, you'd think, Come on, I mean, uh, don't they share the same values? But actually, we've had similar, um, similar attacks in Pristina by people who write to EU, uh, for example, to uh, EU heads saying, why are you funding them? Here, uh, you, should, you should fund us. And then we're attacked by them because of our funding. It's all got to do with actually the market getting smaller and um, money of the donors getting smaller and too many uh, and too many journalists fighting for it, and then not fighting with the quality of the investigation, but fighting with sleazing campaigns. So people who share the same values as us are using it. So in the, in the same, I just want us to be a little bit more um, wider in how we see this. For example, I said the same sponsors of this festival are also a festival or people who may you know, be interested to connect their name with this beautiful conference that fights the le fights for the civil activism are the same people who might tomorrow support the ruining of that um, of that cinema and have an office there. Uh, so it's it's actually we're, we we are being, I think, as as with online media, <laughs> we are being infiltrated, if I may use the word, our sector, media and online that that you rightly said new media, what's its role, is being uh, massively infiltrated. I, I'm not saying it's, it's the majority is infiltrated by, by rogue journalism that wants to attack colleagues and is paid for that and gets, uh, but I think sooner or later the audience will see, but the effect of demoralizing you um, is, is never away. That's why that's why we have to be very organized. But I am, I am rather, I must say, uh, this is not the kind of a battle I was prepared for before when I started, like when I was fighting, uh, waiting for three months in front of the director to allow me to broadcast. I never prepared for uh, colleagues who share the same values, come from the same background, speak great English, take the same funders to be the ones who would work on, on, on stopping me or my colleagues. This is not something, it hurts when it comes from, from the closer the friends are. So it's, it's incredible to find yourself to prepare for that war too. But after the old, old things you just said and, and what she said, and I'm coming back to you, that you said like the quality will survive and like yeah, go up. Like, but don't we need these traditional media you know, to, to disseminate what's what, what, you know, what's quality, what's not. Like, I mean, you guys are also traditional media in a way. Yeah, you are modern, yeah, but we, you are we traditional are, media. Are. So if we rely only on, a, you know, like on the guerrilla media, on the websites, on the citizen reporting, they simply don't have, like, w don't we need a traditional media, like, a, you know, proper fat liberal papers with a lot of 
analytical articles and somebody needs to pay for it to understand the processes, to, to understand what is yeah. actually going on. We have, you know, <coughs> like we don't have Pedro here who's having a blessing, good time, yeah, <laughs> from the global leagues. But we have like the, the, the Serbian media scene is now like almost leakage, nothing else, you know, like this, like this, we heard from our source this and we heard, of, and, and it's basically most, all of it given by the, by the power centers yeah. and by the secret police and by the by one wing of the government, yeah, not the wing of the government and like, we are not, as you know, as a city, as for, for me, who, and, and I'm spending a lot of time trying to understand, and I can afford it much more than the than average citizen of Serbia, it's very hard to understand like what, what the hell is going on and like what's, uh, and we, do, if we and, and, and if we, my question is like, if don't you think that if we lose traditional media in 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 that sense, like in a proper analytical TV show and the papers and like that are costing a lot of money, you know, and we are in danger. Uh, we lost it, and we lost it a long time ago. Um, in poor countries like Kosovo or Serbia, uh, media. Uh, they don't uh, rely on uh, number of copies being sold or uh, number of viewers uh, of a TV show. Uh, they, are depend they depend on the guys who will pay for commercial. And, and as is always the case, you know, always follow the money and you will trace it to the guy who wants to make an influence on traditional media. Oh, uh, new media. And in Serbia, the, the most of the commercials are paid by the state. So it's <laughs> <like> <laughs> yeah. Uh, there are... Um, new media, are besides those, those, you yeah. know, everyone can publish. Yeah, everyone can publish. Uh, but that just means that we also can. I mean, uh, Insider would be still alive if B92 would cancel us. I mean, we, uh, we always say we would uh, rent, uh, you know, a cinema and broadcast, broadcast it on, uh, you know, big screen. If you have that passion for, for, for truth and for, you know, uh, un uncovering, uh, you, know, you know, bad people, uh, you cannot be stopped. And the the, the thing that Yetta said about uh, fighting with the uh, editorial board of, of, of RTK, RTK uh, that's the same thing we had with, uh, with, with, with B92. And it's always to the, you know, that one, well, women in both cases, Yetta and Drankica, uh, who, who did the fight. And you, you, ha you have to rely on that. This is uh, uh, very interesting and important American and whatever is American is, is today is global debate that it's still not, I would say, reaching Balkan at that level that, that it, is, uh, it has in, in, in the US, but I find it very important and it's about uh, the legislation on protecting the source of information. Uh, it's still not one of the main subjects in our public, but it is connected to what you were mentioning two days ago, speaking about this national security being excused for the for different curbs of our freedom. And uh, following attempts to, to kind of unify or put in a balance state and federal laws and protection of, uh, that actually there's no federal law on, uh, on, uh, in, in the US on, uh, on the protection of, uh, of a source of information. Is there a possibility to draw that line, like like to to make kind of a universal and a global uh, uh, definition of when is this step when you are basically endangering national security and once for all and say like okay this is that's not to be crossed, but everything else <coughs> for everything else leave us to to do our job or no. It's going to be case by case. You cannot define it general because you need to, uh, in today's world, they will always say it's terrorism and national security. And we have to find the documents to prove otherwise or the proof to prove otherwise. I think there's no universal system. We, <laughs> the hard job is on us. We have to find the facts, argument it, but you know, in front of, the public is a great flexible mass out there that 
they're fighting, a, we're all fighting a, a battle in front of a public. They need to justify it, we need to justify it. Like recently we had 40 people arrested in Kosovo in front of cameras on anti-terrorism charges and, and more than half of the public has come out to say, well, that guy said a year ago, went to the police and told them he went to Syria to fight because they gave him 60 euros per day to fight and he told the police, I went for my day rate. Why a year later you get arrested? Those stories come out, then our government looks like a Hollywood scene and make, to make them look embarrassed over and over to test, to test their, their arguments on national security. I think Americans have done this very well with if you saw, if being on DocuFest watching from today's film, there was a film about how people did it way before Snowden. It was the film 1971, which spoke about how a group of people robbed um, the FBI uh, files and found out and put them out in the public to, and all those files were about, about uh, anti-war activists, black activists, um, women's groups, activists, so, um, so eventually, you know, this story came out that, that the FBI was after its own citizens, but guess what, today, 40 years on, uh, the director told us that it was because of that uh, tradition of, of anti-war and anti-Vietnam that's happened in America and all the, what secret services did, um, there was limitations to what the CIA and FBI could, could oversee in America, and they formed NSA, a new organization which has more mandate to, to spy on its own citizens, because they couldn't do it through CIA and FBI. So it's incredible that it's a 40 year for me to find the tradition that you started, the American tradition, is, is a cat and mouse constant battle, where they found new ways to spy on citizens on the name of security and they are finding it to do so and uh, dissidents are fighting <laughs> new ways and there are people who support Snowden today from our industry and who don't. But nevertheless, this is a constant, I think, debate that has been going on for as long as journalism exists, as far as I can see. I have one more question on that, but just small digression uh, uh, regarding this news and actually the, uh, the, in Serbia, was the, 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 the news about 40 people who were arrested were uh, about them conspiring to attack visitors of, of this very festival. That was the news we had it on, on B92. And like, th this is my, my, my small digression is about like, don't you have the impression that like, within the last few years, there are certain groups like religious extremists who are like so considered in the Balkan public, in all of our countries, like so, so different, so dangerous. So like, you know, when you write about them, you can, you know, you can, you can exaggerate a bit because, you know, it's, there's never enough security. Yes, it's very easy to fall on that trap. And don't forget we have the communist background. We just hate anything religious. Dot. We just hate, generally we do. I mean, what I'm saying is majority of people do. So we find ourselves in the trap that from that background, we view today religious freedoms issues, but certainly there is, there, there are attempts for terrorism, but nothing, n nothing more than where I lived in London for three years, where I, where they dealt with, with realistic, not just attempts for terrorism, but they bombed undergrounds. We haven't had bombed underground, un transportations in, in Kosovo or Serbia. I think we, it's a bit of a war, it's clearly a war to impress our international friends a little, Clearly, for us in Kosovo, you cannot help and see that it's a war to impress uh, international friends m because you know how the politicians behave towards the cr other, other criminals. For example, our prime minister was asked, but you have a mayor that didn't want to serve sentence. He ran to Sweden. He was convicted to be in jail. He ran to Sweden and he did nothing about him to arrest him in camera, but he finds terrorist attackers to arrest in camera. And um, yeah, I mean, white collar crime that happens in Kosovo, they be uh, their own, like the distribution deal that has stolen a lot more budget than the budget that has been damaged to us by potential terrorists. So it's clearly, they, 
It's a show. So, uh, journalists of New York Times, Washington Post, and, and The Guardian dealing with the, with the, the documents that, that Snowden revealed, uh, and he clearly chose them because he believed in their capacity to process it and present it in the right way, complied on, with the different level, with the, on the different levels with the government, asking them not, with their governments, asking them not to publish certain documents for the reasons of national security, so they decide. They, I mean, they, they decided on some occasions to follow, and some occasions not to follow. For some of their decisions, they were they were later attacked by many other. Some of them were attacked by, by many other activists, including WikiLeaks. So, like, what would be like? Can you see yourself in that situation? What would be your model dealing with the with the authorities asking you to to re, to reveal certain to 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 you know to to blacken certain parts of your story. Uh, okay, you have uh, recently two, you know, great examples of uh, document leaks. The first one is, you know, WikiLeaks and everything with Chelsea Manning and Julian Assange, and uh, the thing with uh, Edward Snowden and Glenn Greenwald. Uh, those are uh, very different cases. Uh, Julian Assange. Uh, just put everything. Uh, he tried to work with journalists, but due to his, let's say, it energy, it it was it was not uh, possible. Uh, and he just published everything he had, uh, everything Chelsea Manning gave him about uh, all those, you know, uh, cables and everything. That's one thing. And you have uh, Edward Snowden who uh, it, it appears that he thought about it for a long time, and he had a plan. He had a plan to uh, put, to give everything to competent journalists, who will then decide what is in public interest and what is not. Journalists are there because of, you know, public interest. We are def defenders of one of the defenders of public interest. And, you know, uh, code of ethics is written a long time ago. And if you just follow that code of ethics, you don't have to do anything much more than that. And you can decide what is in public interest and what is not. And that's what Glenn Greenwald and so a lot of waiters did. Yeah, but if you are, if you are, like what, what do you, you are working now on these oil deals with yeah with with, with the, the, between Serbia and Russia and if 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 the 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 the, the BIA is calling you and says like please we would like to talk to you we need I mean you know there are some dangerous well, things in your course. story <coughs> we would like you to blacken it what would be your f w would you say like I don't want to talk to you okay. or like uh, would you call your lawyer or what you know no, uh, or just uh, sit on the plane and yeah, the, the, the there country. are cases when we call our, our, our lawyer, but uh, our lawyer in time became much worse than us in defending public interest. Well, no, really. Uh, you know, okay, I have, you have a story in which someone spent an, uh, one million euros for something uh, that no one can see, and he says that that's, you know, state security issue, and you cannot touch it. Uh, in 99.99% .99 of cases, that's just crap. You know, there are other interests that are protected uh, with those black lines. And we are there to, you know, erase those black lines and, you know, have that red, or have that, uh, you know, black on white, uh, what's what's on the paper? What, what's your model, Yata, with dealing with, with such things? So, have, have you, did they ever call you to to blacken something for the reasons of of national security? Um, we are right now discussing. Luckily, we are in a stage in Kosovo where we're trying. We're trying to influence laws, so the the jury is still out there. We're trying to influence the law on, on say one of the issues is um, interception law will 
will be a lot about whether we can push through our our option. The uh, our intelligence service wants to have a monopoly on on um, interception, while at the moment in Kosovo courts can intercept, police can intercept, customs can intercept, depending from when they get a court order for things they investigate. And right now, um, intelligence service says there's that's too many for national security issues. We just have to have our hub here. We don't trust that. Just not just because. Um, and there's different. They call into EU. We're fighting literally a battle with their lawyers. They are mentioning EU examples where that happens. We are mentioning EU examples where that ha where is the opposite. Um, similarly, on the name of uh, recently, maybe my colleague spoke about in last panel, we had, when we asked accounts of our Prime Minister to, to see what the Prime Minister and Ministers, how have they spent the money uh, from official credit cards, we wanted to see their accounts. We were written back by the Agency of Protection of Data that you cannot access the ministers or prime ministers' um, official bank accounts, cards, because uh, um, that w will be um, abusing their religious rights. Incredible, in Kosovo. We're 95% Muslim, and we would be abusing his uh, religious rights. That means we would be seeing whether he ate pig or alcohol. So it's, it's their right to, to have that hidden. I mean, imagine this, in the name of human right, to burn, to me, the human, let's say, a, a person who considers themselves human right fighter, they're giving me the argument of human rights back. This is sophist highly sophisticated. I think there's traces of American lawyers here, advice. There must be, there must be. Uh, you cannot justify, this is for Balkan taste. It's embarrassing to say you cannot watch what I've, what, what I've drank and, and eaten. It's, a, it's not a very Balkan answer. So, so yeah, we, we may find year by year, as I said, that things are gonna get cl closed and more closed in the name of security. And we, we just mention this argument all the time, all the time, that the Agency for Protection of Data has been established there to protect the politicians from revealing data. They're doing it in a very legal matter, legal way. I have to, yeah, yeah please. I, ju I just have to add something. We have a, uh, well, we, in Serbia, we have really excellent uh, Freedom of Information Act law, uh, where an agency uh, cannot say that something is secret, and, you know, just to say that's secret, and you cannot, we cannot give you that document. They have to prove that that document has to be secret. And <laughs> that's where they all fall. I mean, uh, we, we, we deal with, well, I, I don't think we had any top secret, I mean, top, 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 top secret document. But uh, there are many classifieds, many different levels of, of secrecy. And they never uh, gave any proof that those documents should remain secret. Uh, and besides orders, to give us those documents, sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. I have two more like technical questions or practical questions for you. But before that, I would like to give mic to the audience if anyone wants to. Join, sorry, <laughs> if anyone wants to join our interesting discussion, yes, please. Hi, I'm Arianet. Um so what are some sustainable uh, um, investigative journalism financing models? First question. Anything that you would recommend other than fundraising? Because even with that, you still have a boss, and that's not the, the public that you're serving. And the other one is um, I see traditional media acting as gatekeepers as well. So they control. So even with something that is crowdsourced and independent, like Kalza.com, and um, I even saw, uh, what's his name, Berat, uh, announcing on, uh, on uh, Facebook, please send me all the information that you have of, about misbehavior of uh, politicians of any political party. 
but then if you have that information and you don't reveal it, you somehow become an intelligence agency of your own because then you have much more information, you have much more uh, dirty laundry on people and you can potentially abuse that if that's not, if that's not made uh, public. So that's all. Uh, what was the thing about the boss? sustainable financial model other than fundraising for investigative reporting media because if it, even with the fundraiser you have a boss that, that's no 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 uh, 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 oh it's, it's crucial fundraising you yeah it's you crucial for journalists to you know keep his independence and no one can if you just read code of ethics you know that, that's all you have to do uh, just stick to it there is, there, there's no one who, who uh, you can uh, let uh, influence your editorial policy. That's the most important thing. So you cannot, uh, I don't care who, who gives me, you know, my paycheck every month. I'm here for the public and they are my only boss. Yeah. Uh, the thing about you know the uh, intelligence agency of your own that's the that's the uh, that's the thing uh, tabloids do in Serbia i mean you know they blackmail people for uh, not publish publishing their I information they have on them that's those people are not journalists and i they are they are not my colleagues and i don't consider them my colleagues you know mm -hmm. that's not something uh, ethical journalist would do? Um, very good question. Very good question and a tough one. The second one especially. Uh, media acting as abusers and I, you even mentioned cases and this is very embarrassing to have colleagues like that but clearly I've even had when we've asked this question in debates had a debate about using information media and becoming the abusers of that information. Uh, I've had people in the program from similar media you're talking about admit that uh, because you have to exist as a business, you can use information to get c commercials. Officially, owners of big, of, of me, big media, I was surprised. I, when I finished, I, I returned the tape. I just have to say tape. something, sorry. Uh, we used information to lose commercials. <laughs> <laughs> yes, unfortunately, that's why we need donors. We can't live without them. And I, I, you know, that's why I beg donors, because otherwise, um, I was amazed. We have such immoral colleagues. I am, I go red I, because of them, because I rewind the tape when that guy said that. Uh, I couldn't believe it. But, you know, five years later, you see what they do. And I think the, the only hope is actually the people you talked about, the whole of the world, even not, maybe just the stupid don't understand it, that they're using information like that. But everybody knows that they're, by the, we just live on reputation. Thank God Kosovo, what we live on is a small place. Everybody gets to know everybody, and you cannot run away. If you do that sort of thing, eventually you will only get hired by people who like the, those sort of things, and you cannot be hired by uh, people who want to keep a good reputation. On Calzopicom that you ask, we have people reporting. You're right, like people report and we publish or don't publish, but it's not publish or don't publish. We thought a lot about this. so. When we ask people to report corruption, and it's like 1,000 reports a month who report corruption, imagine out of them, there could be so many spikes that people have for each other, spikes, that not everything is authentic corruption reporting. So how do we deal with it? We thought a lot about this. What we do is three levels of publication. First, we publish the report without names, NN. Then we send, from the investigative team's unit, we send them in that municipality to verify. Then you have the red dot, like something like, uh, first it's a, a red dot, unverified, but published without an A. When it's verified, we put the name, and the third phase is to publish an article from it. Ask three sources, that's third phase. Fourth phase is to write, when, once the article is published, to write to the institution officially, to whom it may concern, letter, that this is what we found, this is what the, the citizen has reported. We have verified it, and you need to do something about it. In this 
by this system, I can tell you, so statistically, we've got 1,000 reports a month, and s a year later, 70 cases filed in the, uh, with the Kosovo prosecution. Filed cases means they, they weren't turned down, because if they weren't good enough, they wouldn't even get a file. So 70 cases from citizens were authentic and, and just came to us, more than what the Agency for Anti-Corruption has filed. So what means is that people will not come back if they see you being someone's uh, bulldog or just going for your money with your information. So it's very careful. We have to tread. It's such a careful line. But what keeps us in line is the public. They will know what we're up to because our work is so public. We cannot hide. We cannot hide so long. Like those people you mentioned, they cannot hide. They ask for reports, but we ask for the reports. So we get 1,000 a month. I wonder how much does Berat get. Hi guys, yeah, thanks, uh, great talk. I have actually just really quick uh, sort of short Can question. Louder, Imagine that tomorrow um, there was a WikiLeaks style leak of you know internal government documents on Kosovo and Serbia. Um, the two questions is, do you guys, would you guys support that? And do you think that that would have any change in Kosovo and Serbia? Uh, sorry, can I you, can you repeat, anything. please, but, but just keep my closer. We haven't heard the first part of your sentence. All right, sure. Um, if there was a WikiLeaks style leak in Kosovo and, um, and Serbia, um, would you guys be in support of that? And do you think that that would actually change something in these countries? Oh, th that's a tough one. Uh, WikiLeaks changed so much in the way we see U.S. government dealings with other and, you know, uh, internally. Uh, but there are so many mistakes uh, that have been done with that case. Uh, I wouldn't publish anything without, you know, rethinking three times. Just like the, the, the thing Yetta said about that, that, that web website. Uh, we, as journalists, cannot do that. We, we cannot just publish everything that comes to us. But, uh, well, if your question is, would I support more leakers? Yeah, yeah, sure. But uh, leakers with, with, uh, with, with moral, you know, with ethical background. It, you, uh, the, in the, the information you have is, can be used as a weapon, and you have to be careful with that. You can ruin someone's life just publishing some info about him, and you know, you, you're not supposed to do that if it's not in the public interest. That's the thing you have to have in, in, in your mind always, public interest. Is it public interest or not? Yes, in this very town you have a Snowden. Right now, a case going on like that, but it's just this town is so small, he won't get noticed. Um, the worker of a bank here in this town saw a transaction that was uh, he th that got him to suspect that it's corruption. Uh, sus he got suspicious of corruption. That the director of education in the municipality of this town is giving himself money from municipality. He reported this, in a sense, he reported to the bosses. The bosses said, well, it's, if it's official, uh, the person that has official right to use the account, please do your business, continue, keep your head down, it's none of our business. He thought a bit more than that. He thought, this is a, I know this person. He directs, he's responsible for hiring so many teachers in our municipality. He cannot just launder municipal money like this. And the suspicion is that um, someone took the leak out and this then was verified that it was true. A huge investigation has started against that director of education, but a much faster investigation has started against the, this guy uh, who has now had five court sessions. He threatened, uh, the prosecutor is threatening 10 year sentence for him because he has revealed um, confidential data. But so five court sessions in this town for him, no court session and no accusation raised yet for the director of education who today sits in his office. 
So what, what, I mean, you measure it. It's clearly public interest what he did. I went to both prosecutors. They sit in the same building. So one prose the prosecutor says, great, um, great document, very useful for my investigation. And I found out that he's been doing direct of education the same thing for the last five years, stealing the money for the same event, for the war event, for KLA event. He was stealing the money back to his account in the name of war. Um, while the other woman said, I'm going to give the same informant 10 years, I'm going to try for 10 years sentence. Bizarre. And uh, with, with a case like that, it's clear cut. Similarly, we had a leak in Kosovo last year, a leak where during a corruption investigation, our prime minister was caught in a, in a conversation, telephone conversation. We start with with the head of this parliamentary group, we started like this. Hello, hello. Pronto, pronto. Come stai? And they talked like they were mafia bosses. Is it public interest to know that our prime minister talks to his head of the parliamentary group like they are bosses of a mafia gang? Hilarious, of course, we want to know that. Whether it's a leak, private conversation, yeah, private conversation. They talked about hiring of uncles in those conversations. They were leaked by his buddies, by his buddies who were under investigation. And um, so whether we like it or not, those things are going to come out. I think we might, uh, what, what, what I will do is verify it like I did with this guy. I went to the court. I verified it. That document exists. It's true. He didn't manufacture it. So you can verify it. There'll be other media who will put it out without verification, and it's going to be out there, and our job will be just to follow up on the story. But usually, 80% of cases, these leaks end up being damn interesting. Damn interesting for the public interest, and that's what I would say. We would, uh, it's worth looking at them and verifying them and spending time on them. That's what I would do. It's already seven, so I leave my two last questions for the next DocuTech. We had pleasure to talk uh, to the finest Balkan reporters about investigative reporting yet, Jara, Ivan Angelowski. Please give him a round of applause. Thank you, guys. Yeah.